here's another one of those days, another day where science can save your life. We're going to talk about how you get fresh water from other sources of water. But first, I've got a scenario to run by you. You're going to need a notepad, piece of paper, pencil. A little bit of brainstorming. Here is the challenge. It's called a survival scenario. We're going to say that you've chartered a yacht with three friends for the holiday trip for a lifetime across the Atlantic Ocean because none of you have any previous sailing experience. You've hired an experienced skipper and a two-person crew, unfortunately, in the mid-Atlantic. A fierce fire breaks out in the ship's galley, and the skipper and crew have been lost whilst trying to fight the blaze. Much of the yacht is destroyed and slowly sinking... All people on the board have managed to get into a life raft only to watch the yacht burn and sink. Here's your challenge. Your location is unclear because vital navigation and radio equipment have been damaged in the fire. Your best estimate is that you're many hundreds of miles from the nearest landfall. And you and your friends have managed to save 15 items undamaged and intact after the fire. In addition, you've salvaged a four-man rubber life craft and a box of matches. Your task is to rank the 15 items in terms of their importance for you as you wait to be rescued. Place the number one by the most important item, number two by the next, etc. Down to number 15 for the least important. Here are the 15 items, and I will show you the prop, the right answers according to the Coast Guard at the end of the video. But maybe even just write these down in order on a piece of paper. You've got a sailing compass. A transistor radio, a shaving mirror, shark repellent, 25 liter can of water, 20 square feet of plastic, mosquito netting, one case of army food rations, maps of the area, a seat cushion, 10 liters of oil slash gas mixture, one quart or a liter of rum. 15 feet of nylon rope, two boxes of chocolate bars, and a fishing kit. You can pause here, write down those 15 items in the order that are most important. I'm going to move on, give you the answers when we're done the video. Spoiler alert, the one thing you need in order to survive no matter what situation you're in, yes, water would be the most important. So how do we create water if all we've got is salt water? Or one of my favorite things to do in the classroom is actually to take some sewage. Ooh. Just straight up sewage and distill it. Here's answer to, oh, and here are some questions that you're going to work on later. Describe the differences between distillation and reverse osmosis. So that's one of the questions you're going to answer later in forms. Distillation is a process where pure water is created from water that may contain minerals, such as heating. So the, the key to remember here that I keep coming back to over and over every time is that we don't get fresh water from salt water just by heating salt water. When we heat salt water, we get hot salt water. It's not like heating it makes the salt go away. Instead, think of it this way. Heating it makes the water go away. So when we heat the water, the steam that's recaptured later should be pure water. The salt doesn't evaporate, but the water does. We recapture the steam, which condenses in another beaker. It sort of looks like this flash animation right here. We heat the water. The particles start moving faster. The steam leaves, it condenses here, turns back into liquid droplets, and the water coming out the other end should be pure. So please remember, we don't get fresh water from salt water by just heating the water. The key is that we recapture the steam. That is the key to distillation. Okay, slight shift. Osmosis is the movement of particles across a membrane from an area of high concentration to low concentration. In reverse osmosis, we're forcing the water to move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. We make it move backwards. By normal osmosis, the water right here 
would actually move across this membrane because there's a higher concentration of salt. That means higher concentration of water in the fresh water. Normally, osmosis moves would mean the water moves into the salt water. Reverse osmosis means we add pressure here that will push the water through a screen and I've got a video there for us. Watch top screen. You can die of thirst at sea as easily as on a desert. Unless you catch very liquious fish or have this simple life-saving gadget. It turns seawater into fresh water by extracting the salt molecule. The process is called reverse osmosis. The principle is the same when used on a much larger scale. Bob Kershaw explains how. Okay, water comes in the top, goes down to the media filters here, comes over and comes out this pipe here, travels along the pipe, comes over to the high pressure pumps here. The high pressure pumps push it through the semi-permeable membranes. There are 15 membranes in five pressure vessels. This is our product water. This is our brine water. We pick it up in the back of the plant here. It goes through the solid carbon block filters. We can have a sample right here. Ah, it tastes great. Bob Kershaw is drinking water from the ocean around Catalina Island off Southern California. Catalina was a playground of Hollywood celebrities in the 1920s and 30s. It remains popular today, so popular that it was running out of water, drinkable water. Here's developer Jim Oates. We explored a lot of different ways of doing it, uh, you know, cloud seeding, everything but witching to uh, find, find what we could. Uh, drilled some test wells, other areas in the island, and really couldn't find any source that was economically available, and uh, explored the desalination uh, route as a, another source of water, and felt that it, it was feasible. Oates and his partners were granted permission to build 330 units when they promised to build a desalination plant. The project cost $3 million. The plant was built by Village Marine Technology. It's the first plant in the United States to desalinate seawater for commercial purposes and send it directly into people's taps. Today, the plant supplies a third of Catalina's fresh water through reverse osmosis. What we're doing, we're taking fresh seawater, we're pressurizing it to 800 pounds per square inch, and we're pushing it through a semi-permeable membrane. It falls through this channel here that looks similar to a screen door. Then the fresh water is squeezed through the semi-permeable membrane to a wick inside and pulls around and comes out the product. And all we're doing is squeezing out the fresh water. So we call it fresh squeezed water. A semi-permeable membrane is a synthetic material with microscopic perforations, little holes in it. It filters out salt, bacteria, and viruses. For every 30 gallons of seawater in, nine gallons of drinkable water come out. The rest is pumped back into the sea uncontaminated by heat or chemicals. More sophisticated technologies are being explored by NASA to recycle water in space. Astronauts use about 50 pounds or six gallons of water every day. To supply the planned space station, NASA would have to rocket up 18,000 pounds of water for each 90-day mission. On space flights to Mars and beyond, that kind of resupply would be impossible. Tests are underway at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, to recycle water from showers, sinks, washing machines, perspiration, and even urine from the astronauts. The project's director is Randy Humphreys. During past space flights, we've always had what we call an open water system, where this is a closed water system. 
This is innovative and it's the first time we've ever closed the water system. And in an open system such as Skylab and the shuttle, we bring the water up and the crewman drinks out of the tank that's filled on the ground. In this case, we'll recover and uh, replenish the water system by purifying it and bringing that same water back in. So the, in essence, the crew members will be drinking and showering in the same water over and over again. Wash water and perspiration will be filtered. Urine will be purified in a vapor distillation process. The recycled water will be more pure than the water most of us drink from our taps. We did have some resistance initially from the astronauts because of psychological reasons for obvious uh, reasons for not wanting to drink the uh, urine recovered water. But after they understood and we showed them the data on the uh, process efficiency that we have and the ability the system has to recover and purify the water, they were convinced that we should go ahead and do it that way. New technologies to purify water are impressive. But engineers say none are yet as impressive as the natural recycling processes of our Earth. Water is an amazing thing. On Earth, of course, we get water recycled by Mother Nature, and she does a lot for us. As we can see as engineers, when we try to do that same recycling process, it's, uh, it's amazingly difficult to, to recover that water and bring it back to a purified state. That also makes you think about how unique the product water is. So pretty cool that we can turn salt water into fresh water through a process of reverse osmosis and distillation. There it is drawn out. You can pause and take a look at that. One more run through how distillation works. Boil the salt water. The water leaves, leaving the salt behind. The pure water recondenses and drips into the beaker as fresh water. So, how did you do with your list of 15 most important things? First, one quick question, why is desalination such a problem if it's so easy? People have been making seawater drinkable for at least as far back as the ancient Greeks. But when taken to the scale of cities, states, and nations, purifying seawater has historically proven extremely expensive especially when compared to tapping regional and local sources of fresh water. However, as advancing technology continues to drive costs down, the fresh water continues to grow more and more scarce. More cities are looking to seawater conversion as a way to meet this vital demand. With that in mind, if you do a quick YouTube search for this title right here, Water from Water, Desalination. Pretty cool video, even though it's old. Pretty cool video showing desalination on, as you can see, a um, huge, on a massive scale. That leaves us to this, your right answers. Number one, now here's how you're going to rank your points. If you put something number one, but it turns out it's number 15, you subtract them to get 14 points. Fewer points, the better. You want number one, to, your number one, to agree with their number one. So first, right off the bat, of course, you know, 25 liters of water. Oh, that's only number three. Coast Guard says, yes, it's vital to restore fluids through lost perspiration. Even more important... Look at this, number one on the whole list, a shaving mirror. Why would a shaving mirror be number one? Because you can use it for signaling to get help. None of the rest of this matters if you aren't rescued. Number two, the oil and gas. Again, super helpful. It floats. You can pour it on top of the water and burn it. Another signaling device. So number one, a shaving mirror. Number two, 10 liters of fuel. Number three, 25 liter can of water. Let's start at the bottom. The most useless thing on the whole show. A compass, it doesn't do you any good. You don't know where you are. So just knowing which direction is north doesn't help. Mosquito netting also very low. Why? Well, because if you're out in the ocean, there are no mosquitoes that far. They are land-based insects. Um, maps of the Atlantic, also pretty useless, doesn't help you to do any good, 
without all of the tools that go with the maps, without the rest of the navigation equipment. And a transistor radio, what good does listening to the radio do you? So you can listen to Rock 106, that's great. Doesn't help save your life. So there are some of the more useless items. The top three and the bottom four. Case of army rations, yep, pretty useful. Yes, of course, you need food. Shark repellent? Useless. Yes, to repel sharks, but if you're in the water fighting sharks, uh, maybe the sharks are the least of your concerns at that point. 20 feet of plastic, very useful. You can use that to, guess what, collect rainwater um, and to shelter you from the wind and waves. A floating seat cushion could be kind of useful in case your friends push you overboard. A fishing kit, pretty middle of the road, no guarantee you'd catch any fish. The chocolate is actually more useful, a lot of calories right there, could save your life. Nylon rope, moderately handy for tying you to the boat or using it to tie up the friends that are starting to yell you and the rum you wouldn't want to drink it because it's a diuretic it would make you lose water faster but it would be very good as a disinfectant to keep you from getting an infection and dying so there's your list there is this week's lesson on distillation and osmosis hope you enjoyed answer the questions on forms